Man, so happy to be here. We got to give a shout out to Bellevue, our newest campus, DuPont Online. Tacoma, can we make some noise for everyone watching today? So good to see you. Hey, just a quick update. Uh, we're having a blast in DuPont. We are, we are learning a lot. We are, we're, we're growing a lot, and we're seeing new families come every single week, and it is the coolest thing. People are making decisions to be baptized. People are making decisions to follow Jesus. People are getting connected to the life of the church down there, and, and we're learning how to walk. I mean, our legs are shaking, and we are trying to figure out how to walk, and the new baby in the family is taking off, and I have to give honor to Tacoma and Bellevue because you prayed, you resourced it, you believed in it, you got behind it, so give it up for yourselves because we're growing as a church because of what you've done. Everyone that's watching, so glad you're here. And uh, you can go ahead and grab a seat. Grab a seat. Thank you so much. Um, before we go any further, though, I got I to gotta give honor where honor is due. And I have to honor our lead pastors, Pastor Kevin and Sheila. We have the best pastors on the planet. And uh, they have built this. They have not quit. They have paved the way. He stands up here every single work uh, week with a word that he prepared for, and he worked hard for to, to make us better, to challenge us to go after God, to remind us that God loves us. And I got to see a part of Pastor Kevin this week that I know we all know was there, but I got to experience it for myself, and I felt stuck in the message that I'm going to speak today. And I called him on Wednesday and I actually asked him, I said, can I do a message that I've done in the past before um, in youth because I just feel stuck. I feel like I'm hitting a wall here. And he says, John, you, you do whatever you gotta do to have a win this weekend. But I want you to know that you can push past that barrier, you can push past that wall. And I just love that we have a pastor that's saying, don't settle, like God has more for you and there's something on the other side of that. And I push past it and he just always want, he wants God's best for our lives. And I think we should make some noise for pastors Kevin and Sheila because they are incredible. Best pastors on the planet. Ready for the word this morning? Why don't you turn to your neighbor, give him a high five, say it's good to see you. Turn to your other neighbor, say I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. Tell them you look good. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Hola, como estas? Muy bien, Dias. Sunshine shining. That's all I got. Yeah. Un poquito. Just a little bit of Espanol. Just a little bit. We're going to open up to Mark chapter 5. And uh, we'll get into that. But I just want to encourage anyone that does not have a Bible. I talked with someone last service that came up to me after the service, and they said, I, I don't really have a Bible. And I encouraged them, go out to the Connect area, and I actually stood with him right over here, and we downloaded the YouVersion app on his phone. You can go on your smartphone right now, and you can download the Bible app. It is completely free. The whole entire Bible is on there, different translations. There's devotions on there. If you do not have a Bible, get a Bible in your hands. We are better with the Word of God. The Word of God teaches us. The Word of God transforms our life when it is applied to our life. Get a Bible in your hands. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 25, and we'll continue from there. A woman who had suffered a condition of hemorrhaging for 12 years. Everyone say 12 years. A long succession of physicians had treated her, and they treated her badly, taking all of her money and leaving her worse off than before. This woman had heard about Jesus. So this, this woman been sick for 12 years. She hears Jesus is in town. She sees this crowd of people and she says, I've tried every doctor. They've taken advantage of me. They took all my money. They took every, she's been hurt in the past. But she says, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, then perhaps I could be healed. And the Bible says that when she, she got to Jesus, she touched Jesus, the Bible says that power left Jesus. He felt power leave him. And he asks, in verse 32, he says, who touched me? And his disciples respond, they say, dozens have touched you. But he went on asking, looking around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened, knowing that she was the one, stepped up in fear and trembling. She knelt before him and gave him the whole story. One translation said she told him the full truth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, you took a risk of faith. Everyone say risk. You took a risk of faith and now you are healed and whole. Go and live well, live blessed and be healed of your plague. Go and live well and live blessed and be healed of your plague. We're going to go into a series as a church 
And the series is entitled Risk Equals Reward. And the risk that we're going to be talking about is a, it's a risk that we don't really get excited about all the time. It's, it's a risk that doesn't really jump off the page when we see this or when we hear this talked about. It doesn't really leap up in our hearts. And we're going to be talking about the risk of vulnerability. Everyone say vulnerability. vulnerability. It's a powerful word, and we're going to be talking about this. And we're defining the word vulnerability as making moves that have no guaranteed outcome. The risks that we're going to be talking about of vulnerability is making moves that have no guaranteed outcome. One more time, just tell the person next to you, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. Let's pray real fast. God, thank you so much for today. God, thank you for every single person at all of our campuses that I represented, Lord. You brought us here today because you have something in store for us. And Lord, right now, we just, we choose to put our attention on you in your word, Lord. God, we ask that you make us better God, we pray the prayer of Paul that he prayed in Ephesians that said, a spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, that we would know you better and we would know you more and we would know your plan more today, Lord, because of what you're going to speak to all of us individually. God, I pray for, for clarity as I communicate that you would help me speak clearly to every single person. And again, Lord, I thank you for every single person that is here. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen, amen. amen. A couple years ago. Um, I got the chance to go to Africa on a mission trip, and there was a group of us from Champion Center that got to go together, and we were there, and we were representing Champions Foundation. It was incredible. If you've never been on a mission trip, I really think that every single person in some, some time in their life should go on a mission trip. Like, it, it is the best time. God works in and through you. You see things. You get to experience things. It, it's the coolest thing. And on the, the last couple days of our trip, we got to go on a safari, now, if you know me, you know that being out in the wilderness with people that I love, surrounded by a wildlife, like that is where it's at for me. Like that is my garden of Eden. That is my heaven on earth. I love being out in the wilderness. I love being with people that I love. And we saw everything on the safari. We saw elephants. We saw gazelle. We saw giraffe. I don't know if you've ever seen a giraffe run. It is the most epic thing that you will ever see in your entire life. Like those things, those things take off. And they are, oh, we saw crocodiles. I saw this massive like 24-foot crocodile like sitting on the bank by this river that we got to go see this beautiful waterfall. We saw hippos. If you've never seen a hippo, those things are huge, okay? Like bigger than your car. Hippos are massive. We saw wild dogs. We saw lions. We saw this lion in a tree, that, and we got a picture of it, and the, our tour guide like parked under the tree, and we're like, dude, this thing could like jump out and get us. Like what are we doing under this tree? Like let's move. But on the safari, you know, we'd have an incredible time driving around, looking at all the animals and everything, but when we came back to our, to our place we were staying, we fought one of the biggest battles of our lives. And at, at this place we came back to, it's honestly one of the greatest fears of this generation. We had no Wi-Fi. <laughs> we had no Wi-Fi. And we're, we're out in Africa, no communication with our family. We can't send them pictures. We can't tell them how we're doing. We're still alive. We're having a good time. No communication. And why was this a big deal for me? Why was this a struggle for me? Because I hadn't talked to my wife in four days. I had just gotten married a couple months before, and it's been four days since I talked to my wife. This is a big deal. I wanted to talk to my wife. I wanted to FaceTime her. I wanted to call her, but we had no Wi-Fi. It's been four days since I, yeah, wow, thank you. Thank you for having sympathy for me. <laughs> four days. And then one night, we're in the lobby, and we're walking around, and all of a sudden, our phones start dinging. I'm with my cousin Nathaniel, David, and my brother Chris, and our phones just start going ding, 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 and we're like, did it happen? Like, we, we found a hot spot. We found Wi-Fi, everyone. We found some Wi-Fi, and here we are, four millennials huddled around this, ca like this couch, and we're so excited, and we're getting texts, and we're trying to text people back, and I'm like, guys, I got to call my wife. I got to call her. It's been four days since I've talked to her, and I'm so excited to call her. I pull my phone out, 2% battery. As if it couldn't get any worse, right? It's not that big of a deal because my charger is just across the courtyard in the room. So I'm like, I'm just going to walk and get my charger. But there's another problem. When the sun goes down in Africa, these things take to the sky. They're called bats. 
hundreds of bats flying around in this courtyard that is between where I am at and my phone charger so that I can talk to my wife. Swarms of bats. And if that's not big enough, there is like this monsoon, crazy downpour of water. Water, like raindrops the size of this water bottle, like five pounds each. You get knocked out by hitting one these things in your head, falling from the sky. Me and creatures don't do well, but then the downpour on top of it, like in between where I'm at and where I want to be, and I'm trying to talk myself out of them. I'm like, guys, I don't know if I can do this. Like, there's bats out there. Like, they're going to run into me. They might, like, bite me. They're, something might happen, right? And I had a decision to make. Was I going to play it safe or was I going to make a move with no guarantee that I might get hit by a bat or something? But as a kid, I grew up on Animal Planet. Anyone like Animal Planet? Like, that was my jam. I grew up on Animal Planet and Steve Irwin, he was my hero. And he taught me that bats are blind, but they have this sonar so that they don't run into things. And the sound that they make bounces off things so they can maneuver and like not run into stuff. And I believed him. <laughs> I really believed Steve. But I was still hesitant. I was nervous. And I told the guys, I got to make this move. Like I, I got to run, grab my phone charger. It's pouring down rain. Bats are flying. I take off into the courtyard. I'm sprinting as fast as I can, trying to get through this swarm cloud of bats. And as I am running, it happens. <laughs> this bat hits me. In the, it felt like a bald eagle just hit me in the chest. And I absolutely lose it. This bat like let out the most horrific, terrifying like screech that you have ever heard. And you're, it was like a little demon just like jumped on me. And this thing is flapping. It didn't just hit me and fall to the ground. It attached itself. It clawed itself to my shirt. The wings got underneath my sweatshirt. And this thing is just like going nuts. And I, I lose it. You would have thought I was getting eaten by a pride of lions. Like I am, here I am in the middle of Africa laying down. I mean, it took me out. I just went down. It, and I'm laying in the middle of Africa, rain falling, bat on top of me. Help! Like I lose it. I'm terrified. <laughs> terrified but I wanted to talk to my wife. <laughs> so I get the bat off me, finally. Felt like an hour is probably like 10 seconds. And I, I, I grab my charger and I'm in the room and I realize, I don't got Wi-Fi here. I gotta go back, <laughs> like, I gotta go back. So I, I convinced myself, maybe I was running too fast. So because then the bat didn't have enough time to like maneuver and all that, I like really convinced myself of this. So I walked, downpour, the bats, just praying like, God, please, just no, no. But ladies and gentlemen, I, I got back, I got to plug my phone in, found the Wi-Fi hotspot, I got to talk to my wife that day and I was so happy and fulfilled. And I share that story because I just want to illustrate that there's a real battle that we fight every single day. There's a real battle in all of us with our flesh and our spirit. They're at war when it comes to taking risk and putting ourselves out there and making ourselves vulnerable. There's a real risk. Our spirit is constantly saying, go for it. Open up. Put yourself out there. Take the leap. Make a move. Don't play it safe. Don't stay back. Have the conversation you've been wanting to have. But our flesh is just as loud sometimes. And our flesh screams at us, what if I get hurt? I've already tried that once. I've already had that conversation. What if I embarrass myself again? What if it doesn't work out? What if they don't listen? What if I put myself out there and what I want to happen doesn't happen like I thought it was going to happen? And our spirit and our flesh are at war because making ourselves vulnerable is like a two-edged sword sometimes. I mean, we love it and we hate it, don't we? We love the benefit of what it brings in our life, opening up our life and opening up ourselves, but we also don't like it at the same time. We love it when other people are open, but when it comes to our turn, we kind of shut down and retreat sometimes, don't we? And it doesn't help that we have a culture that is screaming at us, that is saying, to protect yourself, you have to hide. Protect yourself, hide your flaws, hide your insecurities, don't trust anybody, figure it out yourself. When it gets hard, you might as well quit. I mean, we see it played out on social media. We play it safe on social media. We cover that picture up with a filter. 
We post all the wins, the best family photo, all the victories, all the highlights of our life, what's good going on in our life, but behind the scenes, sometimes there's some real stuff that's going on. Technology is awesome. Technology is incredible. We are more connected as human beings than ever before because of technology. But there are so many people that are still desperate for connection in their life. Technology is incredible and we find ourselves paralyzed sometimes in life because we're pretending to be something that we're not and we're pretending that everything is okay when sometimes it's not. There's a necessary ingredient to having God's best for our life. And it's the willingness to take a risk and open up your life and get vulnerable. If you want God's best, it will require some risk. If you want God's best for your relationships, it's going to require some risk. If you want God's best for your relationship with him, he's going to call you to step out and open your life. It will require some risk. I've had so many conversations the past six months with different people. Some at our church, some outside of our church, some have been in the military, some were married, so many different people, friends of mine, and there's been two common threads within a lot of these conversations. Some of them say, I'm not really an open person. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a keep things to myself kind of person. I don't, really, I don't really open myself up. I don't really put myself out there. I've heard that said in so many of these conversations. But there's a second thread that I've also heard is all of them want better relationships in their life. All of them want to be closer. All of them want like real authentic relationships. All of them want more intimacy. All of them want to be healthier in their relationships. But there was a barrier. There was something in between where they were and where they wanted to be. And it was the risk of being vulnerable and opening up themselves. God wants you to have the best relationships in your life, the best relationship with your marriage, the best relationship with your kids, the best relationship with your friends, with your spouse. God wants you to have the best relationships. I'm talking about relationships that have some meaning, relationships that have some substance, relationships where you don't have to hide yourself, but you can be yourself, relationships where you are fully known to that person and you fully know them. God wants the best relationships for your life but it's going to require some risk. I mean, let's talk about marriage. What a risk, right? I mean, you get married for better or for worse. I've been married three and a half years now, so I don't claim to know everything, but I do know that that first year, everything is better. <laughs> In three and a half years, this better not get worse, right? And sometimes, why? Because you're opening up your life to this person. Not just, not just the good, not just what's great, but they see your struggle and they see your insecurity and they see the good, the bad, the ugly, not just physically, but spiritually and emotionally. They know what you're dealing with. But if you want God's best for your life, it's going to take that sometimes. It's going to take you to step out and open up yourself, take off the mask, okay with being honest where you're really at in your life. Last year, uh, the weekend that Pastor Kevin told the church that we were going to open a campus in DuPont, uh, this young lady stopped me. Her name was Maddie. It was right here in this aisle way, and she came and stopped me right there after service. I was going out, and I was going out to the lobby to the connect area to meet some new people, and she stops me in my tracks, and she says, hi, my name's Maddie, and I could tell she was nervous. She was shaking. She was so nervous to come and talk to me, and I sat there, introduced myself to her. What can I do for you? How can I help you? So glad you came to talk to me. And she just said, I, I, I don't have any friends and I want friends. That's how she started the conversation. I have no friends and I want friends. And I, I live in the DuPont area and I would love to help out. And I know we're doing construction stuff right now and we're putting the campus together. I, I would love to just show up and help out and so I can meet some new people. I grab Maddie, I take her out to the lobby and I introduce her to some people that were her age and I said, make sure you get their phone numbers, make sure you follow up with them, hang out with them, all of the above. Maddie didn't know how I was gonna respond. There was no guaranteed outcome. She didn't know if I was going to actually introduce her to someone. She didn't know if I was actually gonna respond in a positive way, but what did she do? She took a risk. She made a move and guess what Maddie's doing now? Maddie went to 
growth track. Maddie joined a small group. Maddie has friendships and relationships in her life. Maddie's in our LeadX program here at Champion Center. Maddie is in DuPont right now, throwing all the graphics up on the screen, on the media team, involved and connected, has relationships. Where did it all start for Maddie? When she made a move. Would she still be here at this church and a part of this church if she would have never done that? Probably. She would still be here, but she would still be in the same place that she was before she made the move. Gripped by fear in this big room, wondering, does anyone see me? Does anyone know me? But she made a move. She wanted more in her life, and she made a move. Taking risk and being vulnerable might not have a guaranteed outcome, but hiding guarantees you stay stuck. It might not have a guaranteed outcome, but when we hide, you can guarantee yourself that you will stay stuck. As we started this message, I read a story in the Bible about a woman who was sick for 12 years, and the Bible says a long succession of physicians had treated her and treated her badly taking all of her money and leaving her worse off than before. This lady is someone who put herself out there time and time again, and she was taken advantage of, and they took all of her money. And the Bible says that she was left off worse than before. But I love that she never let her past disappointments stop her from putting herself out there again and finding her healing and finding relationships. She, she made a move rather than hiding Rather than just accepting the circumstance, accepting the condition, rather than isolating herself, she fought through a crowd. I'm sure she was embarrassed. I'm sure there was some nervousness in her heart. But rather than playing it safe, she, she fought through the crowd. She got to Jesus. And Jesus said, who touched me? Everyone's touched you, Lord. We went on asking, looking around to see who had done it. And this woman, knowing that it was her, she stepped up and she said, it was me, Lord. She told him the full truth, her story. And Jesus said to her, daughter, you took a risk of faith, and now you are healed. Go and live well and live blessed. When we stay in hiding, when we close our lives down, when we let fear stop us from making a move, we close the door on what God wants to do in and through our life. Not just our life, but our relationships and our future. When we close ourselves up, we close the door on what God can do in our life. Yes, there will be risk involved. Yes, there was risk involved for Maddie when she stepped out and said, I need some friends. Yes, there was risk involved with this lady we read in the Bible, but relationships are on the other side of you opening up your life. And healing is on the other side of you confessing some things that have been on your heart. And rest is on the other side of you being vulnerable. And real connection and lasting joy is on the other side of you saying, you know what, I'm just gonna make a move. I mean, you can ask anyone who goes to our Celebrate Recovery on Tuesday nights. Woo! Celebrate Recovery is incredible. And you walk in there and these people are so light and they are so free. Why? Because they said, you know what? I need to make a move. I've been trying to figure things out on my own and I need to get some things off of my chest and I need to be honest about life and I need God's help and I need relationship. So I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to open up myself. If you need a safe place to open up about some things in your life, Tuesday night, celebrate recovery. This is the place to be here at this campus. In talking about making moves and getting vulnerable, this has not always been an easy thing for me. I mean, I've, I've lived with walls up. I've lived with walls up with people. I've lived with walls up with God. And I was at church every single week, grew up in this house. I've sat where you're sitting. I've heard all the messages. And there was a season in my life where God had my heart, but there were some other things that he didn't have because it was risky opening up that part of my life. There were some things that people didn't know about me that I kept under the surface and I felt like I had more control that way. I felt like I can keep the peace that way in my relationships. It was a defense mechanism that was in me. It was a guard that would rise up because it was risky to open up myself in that way. And the whole time that season was going on, I was blind to the fact that it wasn't just affecting me but it was affecting the relationships around me because what stays hidden gets infected. And what does infection do? It just grows and it just spreads. It's not supposed to stay there, it's supposed to get out. 
And then I find myself getting married at 25 years old. I'm 28 now. At 25 years old, I get married. And a couple weeks into our marriage, after our honeymoon, my wife looks at me and she says, hey, will you pray for us? We pray for our day, and I don't know what it was, but there was some hurt that was undealt with. There were some things that were undealt with to get intimate in that way with my wife, and it was so hard for me to pray, and I actually said no for a season. I couldn't even pray with my own wife, who I loved with all my heart. Why? Because getting vulnerable, it's risky sometimes. Opening up your life, it's risky. Men, can I, can I just remind you, if you're a Christ follower, we have a God-given responsibility to be the spiritual leader of our households. And I heard Pastor Kevin say that during a message, but my heart was open when he, he says it all the time, but my heart was open that day and it landed on some, on some fresh soil in my heart and it actually grew. And I started to see the fruit because I had a choice. Was I going to open up or was I going to let this be a barrier in our relationship? And I found that openness brings a depth that hiding will never offer. When you open up your life, there is a depth to your relationship with God that you will never have until you open up yourself. Same with your marriage, same with your kids, same with your friendships. Openness brings a depth that hiding will never offer. What move do you need to make in your life? How long have you been putting it off? How long have you been putting off joining a life group and opening up your home to people? How long have you been putting off going to growth track because you were nervous if anyone's going to see you? How long are you going to put off that conversation that you want to have with your spouse or your friend that you've been wanting to have for years now? How long are you going to put it off opening your heart to God again in that area of your life where it hurt in the past? What move do you need to make? And it might not pan out exactly how you thought it would, but I promise you will be better because of it. And there's a reward every single time you open up your life. I want to try to illustrate this to you at all campuses. If you're in the middle section right here, um, the third row, and you are sitting on the far left. You right there, ma'am. Can you please stand to your feet? Sorry. I know you didn't think you were getting called out in church. DuPont Bellevue, please just stand to your feet right now. Third row, middle section, far left. I want to tell you, my left, sorry. You're right. You're good. I want to tell you that we got here early today and we put a gift card under your seat just for coming to church today. Yes, just for you. At all campuses, we did this. Don't look yet. Don't look yet. Easy. A lot of life has happened in this room. These chairs constantly get moved around. I can't guarantee you that there isn't gum under that chair. I can't guarantee you that there isn't some wax from four Christmas Eves ago under that chair. I can't guarantee you that there might be a loose staple under that chair in DuPont. I can't guarantee you that there's a nail sticking out of your chair because we just got done with construction. I can't guarantee you what is under that chair. There's going to be some risk in you grabbing that gift card. But the gift card's yours, so if you want it, I bet you, I bet you want it. So go ahead and grab it. There's a gift card under your chair right now. You can have it. It is yours. It is free. You can flip it over. You can, yeah, she's like, can I pick this thing up? I'm like, yeah, girl. You get it? She got it. That would have been so awkward if it wasn't there. <laughs> Small illustration. There was, there was a little bit of risk involved, right? But the reward always outweighs the risk. Every time you open up your life, the reward always outweighs the risk. I know it hurt in the past, but the reward always outweighs the risk. I know you opened yourself up in the past, but the reward always outweighs the risk. Always outweighs the risk. On the screen, you're going to see a picture of two people And uh, you might recognize one of them. One of them is Pete Wingard. And Pete has, man, him and his family, they have been here for years. Pete has served in our children's ministry for 38 years, everyone. 38 years. Pete was my kid's teacher. Pete was my camp counselor. I remember our camp chants. I mean, he is just, they are pillars, his family. They are pillars in this church. If you ever get the chance to talk with him, you're better because of it. Pete's dad, Sigurd, that's his name. He's 94 years old. And Sigurd's, uh, his memory has started to go. He doesn't really remember a lot of things. And every day um, I get home, my wife and I are staying with them for a couple months until our house is ready in DuPont. Excited to move down there. But they, 
I come home and they're eating a bowl of ice cream at the dinner table, always topped with some blueberries. And they're enjoying each other's company and that Pete's talking about memories and he's talking about times that he had with his dad and he's saying, dad, you've been a great dad. And he's encouraging him and he's uplifting him. I even saw Pete's to-do list the other day, his checklist that he wanted to get done. And on the bottom it said, make a memory with dad. And I love this because what is Pete doing? Every single day he, he gets up and he puts himself out there and he opens up his life with no guarantee that his dad's gonna remember what he's talking about, with no guarantee that his dad's even gonna remember him, with no guarantee that he's gonna recall the relationship and the memory and the times that they had with one another. Every day Pete goes to bed and I hear him say it. He says, Dad, sleep good. Just a reminder, I'm your son, Peter, and I love you. And he reintroduces himself to him every single night and every single morning. Dad, sleep good. Sleep good, Dad. I'm your son, Peter, and I love you. I think about God. I think about what God has done for us. He, he came to earth with no guarantee that we would ever say yes to him. He came to earth and he put on skin and he, he positioned himself in a way where he could be hurt, where he could be betrayed. And sometimes we forget about him and sometimes we don't remember him throughout our day. But God, what does he do? He continues to remain open in his life. God continues to say, I'm still here, son. I see you. I know you had a busy day today, daughter. I see you. I know you had a lot going on. I see what's on your mind, but just know that I'm still open. I, I, and I love you and I'm proud of you and I'm always going to be here. God makes himself vulnerable every day with no guarantee that we're even going to walk through the door. Every day, he opens up himself. Why? Because he desires relationship. Why is Pete doing that with his dad? Because Pete wants to get the most out of that relationship that he can get. And the same is with God. God knows what's best for you. God knows exactly what you need. God knows exactly what is heavy on your heart and the move that you have been scared to make and the conversation that you've been wanting to have and the thing that's been on the inside of you for over a decade now. God knows about all of that and he's just saying, I'm still open, I'm still here, I'm still making myself vulnerable. Even if you don't walk through the door, I'm gonna remain open. If we want God's best for our lives, it's gonna require us to remain open and remain honest about where we're at in our lives sometimes. But it's also gonna require us to continue to make moves that have no guaranteed outcome. This lady we read in the Bible had no guaranteed outcome. Maddie had no guaranteed outcome. Pete every single day has no guaranteed outcome. But they want the most of what God has for them. Every head bowed, every single eye closed. Maybe you're in here and you're saying that there's a move that I've been needing to make for quite some time. There's some things that I've hit in relationships, some walls that I've been hitting too much because I've just been unwilling to go there. Maybe it's talk about it, maybe it's do something, but you've been just unwilling to go there because making yourself vulnerable and opening yourself up, it's a scary thing, it's risky, but on the other side of that risk is a reward. If you're in here and you're saying this, this word just spoke to me and I'm ready to make a move in my life. God's been talking to my heart and I know the move that I need to make. We just lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you see every single hand. God, you know exactly where they're at. God, and right now you have opened yourself. Your presence is here, Lord, and you are drawing close to them because they are drawing close to you. God, in that area that they are opening up in their heart right now, Lord, I pray that you draw so close to them that you are more real than ever before, Lord, that your voice right now would just speak to them and just remind them I'm here and I love you and you don't have to be ashamed. You do not have to turn your back. You do not have to be worried. You do not have to be fearful. That's what God's saying. God, I pray that you give them the courage to make the move that they've been needing to make. 
God, the thing that they've been holding off. God, the thing that they've been wanting to do but fearful because of opening up yourself. Lord, I pray that when they do, they will receive that reward. God, the reward of the freedom, the reward of the intimacy in that relationship, the reward of more depth, Lord. God, as we open up ourselves, God, as we just say, we need your help. God, just coming to you sometimes is vulnerable. Coming to you sometimes, God, is, is hard to do, Lord, but we open up ourselves to you. God, and we say, speak to that area of our life. Give us the courage, the boldness, God, the confidence and the trust in you to make the move this week. God, this week we will see reward because of the moves we make. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna pray for a second group of people. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in the room and you've never made a decision to ask Jesus into your heart, if you've never made a decision to, to say yes to Jesus and make him the leader and the Lord of your life, can I tell you, it is the greatest decision that you could ever make. It is a decision that is full of forgiveness and grace and freedom and a plan that you can't do on your own. And God starts to work in and through your life and you have the gift of salvation, eternal life, and you get to spend it with God. If you've never made this decision, this is for you. Or there's a second group of people in here. You've maybe made this before, but you've been walking your walk and doing your thing and doing your way. And you're saying, I need to get back on track and in alignment with God's plan for my life because I've just, my way is not working. And you're saying, I need to recommit my life. If you've never made a decision or if you want to recommit your life to God today, on the count of three, just lift your hands. No one looking around. One, two, three. Just lift your hands. I want to know who I'm praying for. Just lift it high. Lift it high. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Out of a sign of support, we're all gonna say this together. The whole church is gonna say this prayer, but if your hand is raised, we just put your hand over your heart. I want you to say this with, with all of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I invite you today to come into my life, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Make me a new person. And from this day forward, I choose you and I open up myself to you for the rest of my life. Do whatever you want with my life. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen, amen. Can we give it up for everyone that just made that decision? Welcome to the family of God. Thank you so much for joining us online. Here's what we would love for you to do. Click on the logo on your screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every week we're uploading our messages, bonus content, and even some videos that are guaranteed to make you laugh. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.